We're here with Sterling Allen at Tesla Tech 2012. And Sterling, I'd just like to, to see how things are going and what the highlights of this year's conference have been for you. Okay. Well, when I come to these conferences, I don't really sit in and listen to the talks very much. I've gone to a couple of presentations. I wish I could go to all of them. The thing I enjoy the most about these conferences is talking out in the hall, talking to people at the booths, interviewing people, having meals with people. That's what I enjoy. And uh, I always figure if there's a presentation I need to listen to, I can always get the DVD from teslatech.info. And uh, they, that's how they get supported in this conference, is to have you know, people buying the materials. And every talk I've been to has been phenomenal. I, you know, I highly recommend you looking into those. And hopefully we can talk uh, the organizer, Steve Ellswick, into letting Tim do some teaser videos uh, to, to get people interested in buying the DVDs from the teaser. And uh, that can also help people kind of decide which ones. Because, you know, we all have our areas of, of interest and specialty and what turns one person on and doesn't necessarily turn another person on and vice versa with another technology might be the opposite. And so I, uh, I just really enjoy, uh, the, for me, the highlight of this conference so far has been the, the um, Intelligentry booth with their uh, noble gas engine. I've done a couple, three interviews with them there. We're putting up on the website at PESN.com. Uh, the second highlight for me, which we'll be doing a feature story on, is the interview that I did, or not that I did, that uh, the, the presentation that was done by Moray King talking about the uh, process involved in hydroxy technology, the Browns gas, why it works, how zero point energy shows up as the energy source that where you get this excess energy coming out of these systems, how cavitation's involved. He's really come together, put, put a lot of work into this presentation. A lot of things are coming together scientifically, evidence-wise, piecing the, these things together so that people can understand what's going on, why it's going on, so they can optimize their systems accordingly and push the science uh, yet further than what it is already. Well, now w with Intelligentry, I, I got the impression that what they were doing was kind of a systems integration project. And um, what, what interested me about that was seeing technologies that I think both of us have seen at past year's conferences start to mature. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, do you get the same feeling? Yeah, for me there's a little bit of disappointment because what I was expecting was, I was expecting to see things further along than what I saw because I'm of course following this very closely in our news. Uh, uh, Intelligentry is one of our top five in our top five exotic clean energy technologies which will be the subject of my presentation on uh, Sunday tomorrow uh, where, where I'll be you know, talking about the top five and runners up. Uh, they're number four right now of our top five, and I, I thought they're further along. I was expecting September for people to, to be able to buy mm, a product. Okay. Now we're talking six months from now, and so I can understand things take longer, cost more, etc., than you usually expect. The, the really exciting thing, though, that's happened uh, yesterday was that they are open sourcing the core design of the noble gas engine that serves them by getting the people involved in replicating it's already open source i mean the, the materials are all public domain and all they're saying is hey look you guys you can make one of these things and let's we've done a lot of work in looking at this so we'll save you some time here are the plans here's a kit with the materials that you need and here's some instructions to buy this or to build the stuff that anyone can build from local materials uh, and it can enable you to basically replicate the, the plasmic transition process to see the piston going back and forth using noble gases. Well, to me, that's, to, to me, that's absolutely remarkable because the, the PAP engine, when, when I first got, when I, when I first became exposed to it, I guess, I learned about it in the 90s, and a lot of people learned about it many, many years before that. It was, it was almost a myth. There was a little bit out there. You had to dig through books to find just tiny pieces of information. And then, you know, you fast forward five, six years, and we started to see tiny, you know, 10, 15 second video clips appear, and then some longer video, and you now it's, it's opening up and people are bringing functional devices to conferences. So to, to see these things evolve just blows me away. It's, it's, in a sense, it's almost a lost technology that's been recreated. That's, that's the feeling that I've had, at least.
That's the other presentation I went to yesterday with Bob Rohner's demonstration of the plasmic transition process, the, the uh, piston shooting fire and this pushing these weights up and down. Uh, he actually demonstrated in front of the audience a noble gas engine in operation, so to speak, at least the core principle. It wasn't a piston necessarily, you know, creating torque, but it was a piston going back and forth from the noble gases firing. And uh, that was the first time I've been able to see that particular thing. I've seen a noble gas uh, engine where he just shot a, a, something out of a piston across the room, uh, but this is, you know, a, a more developed version of that and then to see what the, the John Moners group is doing, uh, Bob's brother and competitor, uh, vicious competitor I should add, that you know they're, they're in, in process of actually integrating that into a, an engine that could power you know 200 horsepower with just two cylinders and eventually could cost $300 once it's mass produced. At first it's going to be a few thousand to buy one of these because you know the one-offs and whatnot, the, the way where they're at right now, it's going to be more expensive to build it. Yeah. But even that's really cheap for the amount of energy you're getting. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, another thing that's exciting about this that you know your audience might not know that, that mine does because you know I talk about this all the time. They're actually going to let me put one on my home as a beta tester. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm going to be able to take one of these home in about a month or so from now, supposedly. Well, and I'm pretty sure that everybody is familiar with your website, but it's, it's the PES Wiki website, right? PES mm -hmm. dot, dot org or. Well, there, there's a number of domain names. Uh, FreeEnergyNews.com is the easiest to remember. FreeEnergyNews.com. Yeah, okay. That forwards to the homepage of PESWiki.com. PESN.com is kind of the stories that we compose, whereas the homepage at PESWiki is stuff that we link to externally as well as our stories and, and our directory of, of technologies, genres, and companies, and individuals involved in this whole free energy world. And so as you test this device, we can expect to see stuff like this show up on PezWiki and we'll have updates. At so. first, I'm going to have to be under a gag order to not talk about it. I can tell you that I'm getting one, but I won't be able to you know, show pictures of it and stuff. They don't want any, any videos of it running until they go public which they're t now talking about it being six months out. Mm, okay, so that, that's one thing that we can expect. Now, the, the other thing that you brought up, and I, I spoke with Moray King last night, and mm -hmm. it seemed like he was describing bubble fusion, except he was mm -hmm. describing cavitation bubbles from like boat propellers, and then uh, so, uh, David Tam mentioned water hammers, have that reported as well, mm -hmm. and they, they found what they believe to be some kind of reaction elements in, in water that should be relatively pure. Um, so what, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that's kind of exciting for you? Yeah, it's very exciting. It's uh, number six in our top five uh, is the um, Mark McClare's uh, technology where he's taking, he says that cavitation will be to the 21st century what electricity was to the 20th century, being a prime mover, not just for um, you know, rudimentary power, but for microsurgery and element transformation, you can create element any element on the periodic chart using water, mm, okay. using that process, using cavitation, and so cavitation mentally for us, uh, you know, has been this destructive process that destroys propellers, etc. Now we're going to turn it like lightning was to electricity, where it's just a scary thing of nature. We're going to turn it into a workhorse. Electricity became a workhorse of the 20th century. Cavitation is going to be the workhorse of the 21st century. Well, and it, it's at the core of, of hydroxy. It's at the core of, of cold fusion. Both processes probably involve cavitation and involve this uh, harvesting of zero-point energy in that whole process. It, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to see how it connects in. And it, it's almost like this this larger umbrella that these others fit into if you know if in fact it, it bears fruit like I think everyone's hoping it will mm -hmm. so well thank you again Sterling I sincerely yeah. appreciate it and I think we all look forward to seeing how things how things turn out and we'll see posts at some point on PezWiki. I'm glad to see you here at the conference it's good to see you again Tim.